at the Lokov, Partridge Island, by Theodore Harding Rand, read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. What more can world-worn spirit ask than here in nature's arms to bask and see the plangent tide at task? The zest is swift as lusty youth touched with an undertone of ruth invincible as ageless truth the wonder of all wondrous things how coy the birds they lift their wings the wary ship to her anchor swings sun moon and stars of ancient prime and of to-day in confluence chime the universal one sublime pouring these floods of deep surcease in universal pain release in universal travail peace the strong right arm is here laid bare in strife by which he doth declare another shall not with him share forces of universal law which hither these vast waters draw send through my soul his tides of awe while universal radiance charms and beckons to his winsome arms to soothe my timid soul's alarms of joy of grief he does not rob the light with intermittent throb falls on the waters glad a sob here he and i are conscious each of each a deep a waiting beach a shell a sea that doth beseech how all unswift my eyes to see the universal god in thee who walked the waves of Galilee. Give, freely give, thou dost not dole, pour chrismal balm upon my soul, anoint me from thy golden bowl. In travail, pain, grief, joy, the wave slumbers nor sleeps, the earth to save this word the blissful god he gave ere yesterday in palestine love's flagon poured the ruddy wine life of the universal vine the tameless tides unresting seethe i rest me for he works beneath peace peace the toiling waters breathe peace healing peace in murmuring main in brooding sky fanned by lone crane the sunbeams bicker in the lane peace on the lighter's falling sail peace on the ships that breast the gale and peace in human hearts that fail end of poem this recording is in the public domain the stormy petrel by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by nemo the stormy petrel fair hero brave hero of sea the sea in its darkness of wrath i run down the breaker with thee i mount the next in its path our hearts be together charmed one lift their wings as fearless as free ride the gloom as if twere the sun gold bridled for you and for me summer rain the cold drifting sleet that whistles as spiteful as hail a roadstead the billows that fleet under the black lash of the gale we laugh at their seething their roar draw our breath full in their face we have wings we know we can soar 
your secret in mine in embrace wings wings the soul of our life outspread they victory tell uplifting amid gulfs of strife wafts heaven that keep us from hell brave hero winged hero of sea the sea with black tempest and breast here we mount on the breakers free soon to soar in the calm and to rest end a poem this recording is in the public domain oblivion by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk. the all-devouring sea i said while looking on the green and red-ribbed rocks atilt that flank sharp's head the diary of the rain cloud driven to yield again its spoil by heaven the west wind serving the replevin notes of the ocean's teeming floor the carven shell the seaweed spore and ripple marks of tidal shore vast tablets of the world of eld a mighty bodleian unspelled by ravine into dust compelled the hills are fated to their fall upon the great upon the small oblivion drops her raven pall and then i thought the form and mass may baffle ken of eye and glass and yet the record may not pass tittle and jot where all seems nil a finer form in form may still wait touch of that which doth fulfil the liquid air unseen unheard writes in an everlasting word the wing beats of the hasting bird the sweet light leaves and bears abroad a picture of the wide realms trod with winged feet gold sandal shod etching in truth and beauty's grace beyond compare of antique vase on fronting hills the others face nor shoreless deeps of space debar blazon on earth of records far in greening orb or burning star i said coined for exchange in mart of purblind men with leaden heart this word oblivion on life's chart deft science balance now prevails this simulacrum in the scales the verdict to the counter nails and then distraught by onward sweep of meditation long and deep i sought me out a place to weep o soul may not thy leaves i mused stirred by death's shock through all diffused reveal thy story unconfused clear traced by thoughts all subtle beam a quickened palimpsest a gleam reorient out of dusk and dream end of poem this recording is in the public domain sea music by theodore harding rand read for librivox dot org by bruce Kachuk. fleecy white waters shorn by the tempest wrathful and doomful rolling to land naked and lustrous fiercest of smiters straight for the stern cliffs iron to steel shock unto shock calls boom answers boom roars the huge tide loom thunder and storm torn are the vast webs 
woven of tumult flung to the cloud rack tatters of sound the glistening waters again are marching loyal and true under the hollow sky a hundred million of men throbbing as fiery dew under the morning's eye list to the repetent note multiplex tone of the sea refrain of grief of mirth on violet air afloat far borne to mountain and lee to the home of its birth list as its music unbraids rivulets pour from the hill winds wash the lips of the trees the brook by the rocky glades brattles its way to the mill through fields a dream with bees forests of pine and of fir plain as their dark plumes are fret by the free coursing winds alder and golden birch stir to notes too sweet to forget sung by brook as it winds hark the lone laugh of the auk as twere a disprisoned soul come from out the shining foams and the loons ha ha and mock mid the torn surf's booming drum or hushed tides star sprent domes the ring dove coos in the grove the cataract's thunders jar rapids swirl white and hiss peoples in temples of love echo their anthems afar diapasons of bliss great flux of the world o sea blood of earth's wild pulsing veins beating to orbs afar your life and mine cannot be unlinked with god's joys and pains here or in throbbing star list as its music unbraids list to the much sounding sea list to the repetent note multiplex tone of the sea refrain of grief of mirth on violet air afloat far borne to mountain and lee to the home of its birth end of poem this recording is in the public domain summer fog by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by nemo summer fog one waft of beaten brine of the bay tonic keen as steel and strife blowing wet and cool in my face tang of bitter savour of life two billows calm of whitest fog over ships and homes now roll breath of sea in quest of heaven groping blind as human soul blearing hiding muffling all life itself laid under the shroud three breath blown veils of faltering mist filmy dreams of luminous cloud shifting curtains fret with air noiseless sped as northern lights opening shutting gaps of blue gleams and glories glooms and nights torn by winds and riven in spray borne afar o'er pine trees tall clinging round the mountain crest melt in azure roofing all four mystic phantom mime of life witching visions vanishing play belts of shadow rending veils cloudless dome of perfect day five come again white vapour of seas blow thy pungent balm in my face soft illusions weave o'er earth charm me up to heaven's embrace 
and a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Arethusa by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The Arethusa. A pearly boat am I, from silver crag I hail, wrought of the sea and sky, freighted with moonbeams pale. I hoist my purple sails to catch the starbeams gold, and furl them in the gales the sun blows over bold. Rainbows and flying tints and sunsets crimson glow, a thousand gleams and glints all day do come and go. But as the silver moon rolls up the breathless blue, and all the stars in swoon are hidden from my view, I ope my hatches wide, and laid with pearl and sheen, to deck my home-bound bride, the basin's peerless queen. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Diane and Fundy by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Diane and Fundy Designs for a Timepiece 1. The Enchantress In silver shoon, on sapphire pavement clear, Fair Diane walks the overarching night, Her spell she lays, Great Fundy leaps with cheer, She breaks, he flees in elemental might, Two, the lovers diane pale diane sailing the upper sea searching for lover lost on earth's lone beach and fundy forward backward ceaselessly by love's impulsion borne to utmost reach three art and science diane with silver robe from her shoulders flung and fundy with his tidal arc engaged beating as a great pendulum forth swung the seconds of the geologic age. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Fisher's Song by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The Old Fisher's Song. From the broad-shouldered cobaquids we saw a prone blomadin in lotus-eyed repose. The immemorial vigil lapsed to dream. The basin lay as if in calm of swoon. Upon the bosom of the breathing tide, the drifting ships, wide-winged in air, in sea, sailed double on a single keel, a ship in either stilly heaven, above, beneath. The day was warm, and as we lay beside the woodland brook and watched the pinfish play, we saw the sky within a silver pool, like a great vase of lapis lazuli, veined with the feathery spray of cirrus cloud, while cumuli in spotless beauty bloomed therein, a garden of the gods, and all the pool seemed fragrant with a myriad sweets. There's promise of fair morrow, Harold said. The witness of the sea and wood is one. The hissing brine, moonstruck, comes vengeful up its iron gateways with remorseless flood. This little brook in rage and foam tears through a hundred hills. Each sets a mirror at our feet of beauty's self. And so I ween the fury of the age will end as full of calm as are this sea and pool of heaven. And breasting an old path to the carved shore where fell at ebb the sea-green billows clear, the path o'ertangled thick with alder, hung with tags that take the rich brown vandyke love, and cool with dusky air in which all still, high bright and fronded fern and lichen spruce swam deep in voiceless sea of wildwood balm. My eye had sight of emerald moss and bells that wreathed the bearded rocks that once were fire. Ho, here is where the fisher lives who sings all day while fingering nets and chants the tide to sleep cried harold as he tends his sayings at night some threescore souls like his would make a state and one such state the golden age this old man never knows when spring is past but pipes a robin song from may to may a fresh-blown breezy song of coming good he's piping now 
heirs of the century sons of the next hearten your spirits your souls keep unvexed there's an ebb in the tide there's an open sea wide but where sun and star dart you've a trustworthy chart beside the wave-worn cliffs painted with rainbows of a thousand storms we sat us down and took on grateful cheek and brow the walking winds that yestermorn far out atlantic's gray and resting waste in awful tempest smote the full-winged ship and plucked it naked to the hungry deep peace is of conflict born i said and good seems rooted oft in ill man gropes in fog and is a child tossed in a cockle shell the stars wink over him and then are gone the sun is not and when he deems he's lost the shore breaks forth in silver welcome sweet care for the coming man heirs of the race hearten your spirits gird quicken your pace there's a sound in the air there are trumpets a blare and there's nothing to dread you've god overhead the sirens once were symbol of chief fears that met the hardy mariners on life's main said harold musingly but now the coast is set with sirens groaning lest he touch the isle mist veiled and hooded white with fog but cruel as the sisters twain of death science to-day the witchery of the past turns into truth to guide the course of man tracks to its lair disease and bolt and flame seduced to service of the struggling race while breeze of health begins to fan alike the cheeks of rich and poor in city ways and wisdom cries aloud in every street you of the world ages saviors of man hearten your spirits lay open god's plan labor hungers and wastes while love tarries nor hastes yet the notes round and clear the full time draweth near but what of man's grim lust and greed said i the comradeship of stars and night is not more awful than is that of man with sin nor shows more steadfast purpose gainst the light the sky and air fresh washed with summer rain forthwith begin to cloud with haze and smoke till smit again with lightning's wrath and torn by buffet of the thunder's pealing voice so hath it been with man till judgment ire reddens in vain to purge his murky sky and flash the light of god upon his soul the beastly lure of drunkenness that cloaks itself in the white mantle of the christ delusions wan that prints mirage for sight on eyes of civic crowd and nations too or unclean faith assoils in simple hearts the simpering guile that toys with capital and robs the workman of his honest wage while like the surging murmurs of the sea sounds out the moan of willing labor's voice for bread to fill its famished children's mouth the lust of power to sit in place of god and to turn for selfish ends the wheels of fate of fellow man these wait a day of doom heirs of the century sons of renown lift up humanity's broad kingdom and crown there's a purpose replete to put all neath man's feet and we see it begun in the virgin's crowned son injustice harold said with eye that burned like a star is the devil's own trademark and hottest comes from hell through saintly hands the race of man is in the making yet hypocrisy still deftly apes true worth thus prophesying universal good nature is non-committal of her end but god is hiding not man's destiny yon fitful beacon flares the dark night through and then the kindling clouds days herald burning golden dawn earth's skyward crags which thirst for news from god are bathed in heavenly light and from their sunrise shoulders the full morn shoots far the splendors of its coming noon the shadows of a fleeing night yet dim the age and mask a hundred ills is good more eager grasp that since they haste away but from the slopes there pours a clear new light divinely aired above that of the sun philosophy of schools nor science wise nor labor of itself life's secret finds that fulfills the promise of man's vermeil bloom tis love alone can sheathe the alien sword and crown mankind in his own kingdom lord 
heirs of the coming age makers of man the christ be your pattern i choose with elan there's a presence at hand there's a voice of command it is love king of men alleluia amen and as we turned toward home by open beach the waves were loud and clamor on the shore but over all and far away we caught the drifting chant of the old christian seer it is love king of men alleluia amen end of poem this recording is in the public domain Nora Lee by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Nora Lee Away from Howth into the south A staunch, brave ship left harbor mouth The Easter bell, all sails a swell Gallantly swept to sea, they tell And Nora flamed like one ashamed When her fair sailor man they named Three moons did heap the cresting deep Since Nora Lee was wed at deep. Up from the dim gray ocean's rim No tidings came of ship or him. A seagull's wing would make her sing, And I with smiles her wedding ring. If signal high flew in the sky, She knew the Easter bell was nigh, And pulled a rose as wife that knows Her good man cometh at the close. The white ship came, t'was not the name, and Nora Lee was not the same. The Kraken grim in dream did swim Beside the Easter bell and him. The ocean swell and harbor bell Chimed in an endless passing knell. In gleaming green of breakers sheen The pallid light of death was seen. The shaping clouds, the mist-like shrouds, Floated in ever-thickening crowds, Till piping wind her blood did bind, Rose by the phantoms of the mind. Cheer up, good wife, the neighbor's rife, said all. The bell has charmed life. Brave Captain Head, no dawn a reel, in vain e'er signaled him, tis said. Of all this town, from foot to crown, no sailor has so just renown. The winds that blow, the reefs that grow, each one by heart he'd know, he'd know. Some night full soon, or morn or noon, the bell will fly her home just soon. The days they came and went the same, the moons, the tides, the mists, the flame. And Nora said, Since I was wed, six moons the heaping tides have led. In gloom I pine. Love makes him mine, alive or dead. I'll throw the line. She pulled a rose as wife that knows her good man cometh at the close. Three neighbors true with her she drew to the gray shore, and calling through, with passionate leap far to the deep, the lifeline good wives always keep. O oh, Mike, my man, my dear good man, the line, the line, my dear good man. Calling so sore down the shore, as fell the wintry surge's roar. Across the line of foaming brine, low answer came that lit her eyne. The neighbors three with Nora Lee all heard the words from out the sea, yet none e'er said what passed the web, a fearsome awe o'er them was spread. When next boom fell, the Easter bell sailed into harbor, as they tell, with silk gossoon a stream a boon, and Nora in her calm did croon, and softly tell, I knew it well, his head it tosseth with weed and shell. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To W by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. To W. Mural and hemal arch, you say? Tell out man's history today. Brain and mechanics have their way. Is structure then sole test of kin? The ape from man in form and skin is far as holiness from sin? Emotion swears with hand uplift that beauty is no mere makeshift, significance divine is drift. Beauty of sound, articulate speech, 
lorries and pies might simians teach these therefore nearer to man reach while nightingale and mocking bird approach in music's heavenly word closer than mammal e'er conferred were structure and function parallel the word might break the mystic spell but function doth its test compel upward to man the beaver deft in structure gains of tail bereft but if there were no house skill left and if in structure beavers be in tooth and larynx nearer me than flirting blackbird in ash tree his song beyond all such control comes up in kindred echo roll with those that tremble in my soul true in mechanics there is seen a gross resemblance in the mean of ape and man though nigh and clean but grosser want of function shown of human attribute and tone sweet rhythmic utterance unknown beauty of form proportion fair and dignity all wanting there though neural and hemo arch compare of structure all you find is that a function it performs whereat a thus or thus of sights come at and yet you truly know far more feeling from out her open door affirms in speech a beauty's lore o oh, awesome beauteous pleasant too inspiriting ennobling true or contrivance each as is due but no account of this you take your thoughts are polarized and make an open sea of a tiny lake you don't believe the colors of birds and insects are god's painted words to please the master of his herds mere marks ancestral once of use now useless as an empty cruise derived but not designed you choose yet why such skilful pains bestow that colors once had use to show vain zeal since that you cannot know fruitless your words is it not plain designed or not like april rain the end achieved is man's high gain tis folly to attempt truth's goal with logic got of half the soul truth will not have the half but whole beauty god's gladness seen in time lights up truth's calm white face sublime with radiance of the golden prime shall you and i look down for light nay upward let us fix our sight downwards the awful gulf of night End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Marie de Pure by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Marie de Pure. Not with her outward eyes, but with her mind, her living soul, her faith, for she was blind. Marie de Pure, with simple loving heart, had seen the Christ and chosen the good part. She never thought with Milton in his pride, Does God exact day labor, light denied? But gave her willing hands as one who saw, deftly to plate for use the yellow straw. With humble workers of her craft she wrought for daily bread, and Christ's great lesson taught, that love the life far more than meat regards and body more than raiment sweet with nards for when the pastor who like john had leaned upon the master's breast spoke words that yeaned the pity of his heart for those that sit in heathen night nor know christ's torch is lit marie de pure her soul winged like a dove eager to bear the news of light and love gave of her humble toil more than they all since love make willing answer to love's call amazed the man of god to marie said your gift is great a part i take instead but she with sweet insistence spake him nay i am richer far than those who see the day these workers of the golden straw buy oil when darkness falls that they may see to toil but i am blind i need no oil for light i give this lovelit lamp for darker night marie de pure a sweet and gracious beam speed from thy burning lamp a christ-like gleam 
to those who in darkness sit and some who without serving pray thy kingdom come end of poem this recording is in the public domain By the Love by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson By the Love, an Easter Idol Twelve months agone, the beauteous face, All white with pity, as a wave with foam, Sank in the dark of death. Four summers and the wafture of the fifth Had poured their cataract of gold Far down the shining shoulders, of the seraph boy while love a father's and a mother's hung above its laughter like a thing divine o golden head that drifted down to death sweet eye and voice by silence swift devoured dawn's kiss upon the forehead of the day the fresh-blown surge of grief was stilled and halcyon hope her azure wings outspread as the hollow sky on eastern morn was like a lily filled with golden light swift through the hush of death the thrill of life touched the still chords of the fair mother's heart and woke unquenchable desire to lay white lilies from the darksome mother earth upon the tomb where circled like a dove her winged hopes the tomb where long ago white angels watched the birth of life anew beside the lilied mound she lingered long her rising soul pushed at the gates of death till like a creek from which the moon has drunk the tide they yawned empty and bare of hope all spectral grew her heart with tearless grief as some sweet plot of lichens reft of rain there are no angels now she said to roll the stone away Oh, that he now were here to raise my dead, if tis not all myth. And as she spoke, she lift a bitter face into the eye of the bright Easter day. Not far away she saw a little child of scarce five years, and drawing near she knew him one who never felt a mother's kiss. Now sitting at the grave where one long month had slept his father, kith nor kin bequeathed the boy in the wide circle of the earth she knew that rose and rosebud on the stem father and child had crimsoned life with love and that the wind of death had snatched the rose and left the unsheltered bud alone yet blinded by the night of her own grief scarce had she seen his golden day's eclipse now swift she marked the tender mobile lips the spirit light aglow and eye on brow and the rare beauty of the noble face is your name mary fearlessly he asked who with the angels talked when the great stone was rolled away oh no dear child she said whom are you looking for with reverent mien yet eager voice for jesus said the child oh jesus is not here my darling boy he's risen you know yes said the wistful face i've waited here all day for him to come and raise my father up i thought perhaps he sent you tis so late to bid me stay a little oh tis never too late for jesus he said and brushed away the tear he's sure to come for tis the rising day the woman stooped to kiss the wondrous boy and sat beside him there upon the grave and sobbed like organs swept by the master's hand what makes you cry perhaps your father's here to be raised up no my darling but my child he stroked the woman's hand don't cry he said jesus does not forget the rising day he'll surely come and give to you your child and me my father he will come to-night i saw the two men who from emmaus came go by at early morn and jesus will meet them and turn in this way come as they in wonder all about his dying talk and rising too the men will know him not but i shall 
I will call him to stop and raise my father up. How shall you know him, my dear boy? she asked. Oh, by his smile, and by the picture father showed me once, but, with his hands upon his heaving breast, I'll know him best by the love I keep in here. Shall you? she said. And are you sure you'll know your father? My own father, said the boy with wondering voice. I'll know him by the love, and so will you, your child. They will not look the same, for Jesus did not, but they knew him by his love. And finer grew the face, as the fond lingering voice in love's own tones repeated, and will know them by the love. Moveless a moment, as the tide at full, her heart hung in a balance, and as its tremulous deeps swayed to the signs of heaven, its wave broke o'er the banks of self to life. Philip, she cried, and clasped him in her arms. Jesus has gone to heaven, and I am sent by him to take you to your father now. Come. With faith strong as the noonday sight, instant the child clasped home her trembling hand, and passed without the gates, nor backward looked. Silent he went, for expectation held him fast, and a great light was on her face. Entering her home, she bade that food be given to the famished boy, and when the maid brought milk, honey, and bread with broiled fish, he said with exultation, Now I know this is the house. It's all here just the same, and he'll be here tonight. With winged feet, the wife sped up the stair to meet her husband's step, and in a rapture told him all and of the wonder heart below. Heaven, a fair child, an angel boy, has sent our stone to roll away. For us his vision is no less than for himself. O oh, husband, this is life's supremest hour for us. I shall know him by the love, sweetly he says. It shall be so indeed, cried the father's yearning heart. As she returned, the child most eager said, in a sweet voice, half sob, but full of hope. Oh, wash my face and comb my hair before I see my father. Tis not too late yet. The touch of the ineffable child trust pierced deep her heart. Yet with assuring tones the words fell. Philip, come, let us now go to him. The auras opened on a face noble and winsome sweet though smiles were close to tears. As as your bird on mountain stream halts a brief moment on some jutting crag, ere as a flash of streaming light it cleaves the dewy darkness of the trickling dell, so for a moment halted the sweet child, took one step forward, and then leapt into the arms where death shade once was deep as night, but where co-mingling love now glads the gloom, all lit by the sweet azure of the heart with head thrown back and questioning eyes agaze. Father, you're changed, he said. But by the love we know each other, by the love, the love. The father's heaving heart did echo sweet, the love, the love. And nestling down upon the manly breast, the curly head, soft stroked and soothed, with all the lullabies of love, was rocked like harbored sail to rest of sleep, lapped in the love which fed his simple faith, and poured a golden Easter in the heart of her who groped in darkness among the tombs. In the poem, this recording is in the public domain. End of at minus basin and other poems by Theodore Harding Rand.